Welcome, fight fans, MMA fans, and enthusiasts. I am your host, the J Man, and welcome to my UFC top 11 welterweights. All right, I'm going to break it down for you, give you my top 11. Here we go. I'm going to start out with number 11, Martin Kampman. Okay? Martin Kampman has 16 wins and 3 losses. All right, seven by knockout, seven wins by knockout, six by submission, <clears throat> one win by disqualification, two by decision. So mostly a knockout guy with six submissions, so pretty close there. Good mix between knockouts and submissions. All right, Campman's most recent win was against Jacob Volkman at uh, USC 100 in January. He did win that by guillotine choke. So there you have Martin Campman, number 11. Number 10, Mike Swick. Mike Swick trains out of American Kickboxing Academy, along with some of the other guys on my list. Very reputable training camp. Um, Swick, since his welterweight debut um, at UFC Fight Night 12 in January of 08, he went on a winning streak of four straight wins beating Josh Berkman, Marcus Davis, Jonathan Goulet, and Ben Saunders. Um, he beat Ben Saunders by TKO and Jonathan Goulet also by TKO. Looked very impressive. Um, Mike Swig recently ran into some trouble getting uh, <clears throat> beaten by Dan Hardy by unanimous decision and then beaten by TKO uh, or actually submission by Paulo Tiago. But Mike Swick is looking to get back on the winning track. Uh, he's got a lot of potential. He's just an overall <clears throat> good fighter. So he's my number 10 pick. My number 9 guy is Matt Hughes. Of course, we all know about Matt Hughes. Um, looks like he's going to make it into the UFC Hall of Fame. I think he belongs there. Uh, he has 43 wins, which is amazing. I mean, that's more wins than pretty much anybody else in the division. Maybe even anybody else in the UFC that's currently active. And he is still fighting. He has a match coming up against Renzo Gracie uh, at the next UFC, 112. Um, I think everybody remembers the fight he had with Matt Serra. Most recently, he got a win over him. And also, the Hoist Gracie match, which was fantastic. He was able to beat him. But Matt Hughes has had wars with GSP, even beating GSP first time, and BJ Penn. He's just had so many victories and through the years. The guy's great. What can I say? He's, he's slowing down a little bit, but he's still one of the top guys. All right, let's move on to my number eight pick. It's going to be Paul Daly. Let's see here. Paul Daly comes from the UK. Um, he's got really great knockout power. We've seen him knock out a couple of guys lately. He's got 23 wins and eight losses. 23 wins, that's saying a lot. Um, not too many guys have more wins than that in the division. Uh, Paul Daly, let's see. I, Paul Daly's had a knockout victory over Martin Campman. Let's see here. If I'm not mistaken. He will face Josh Koscheck at uh, USC 113 in May. He's had victories over Dustin Hazlett. And Junior Barada. Um, I think Paul Daly's a bigger threat to GSP than Dan Hardy was because I think Daly has better takedown defense, also more experience. So if Daly can work on his wrestling and takedown defense, he could be a really a top contender, uh, a big threat to GSP. Um, Paul Daly's got to prove himself against Koscheck, though, so we'll have to find out about that. All right. Next on my list is going to be, we'll see what we got here, Dan Hardy, of course. We talked about him, another guy from the U.K., really a tough kid. Uh, I think he won a lot of respect in his most recent fight against GSP. He just hung in there all five rounds. Looked like uh, GSP was going to tear his arm off at one point, but the kid just wouldn't quit. He's so stubborn. He's so tough. Um, but he's absolutely got to work on his takedown defense and his wrestling. Uh, he had a, a very nice 
KO knockout of uh, Roy Markham. But that's about the only thing impressive on his resume other than, um, what has he got? Let's see here. 23 wins, 7 losses. Well, that's Dan Hardy at number 7. My number 6 is going to be Anthony Runbull Johnson. Anthony Johnson. A really big guy to be competing at 170. He's got to cut a lot of weight to get down there. But once he's there, he's really strong. He's got the uh, wrestling advantage and the knockout power. Uh, we saw him have a battle with Koscheck where he just kind of barely lost that fight. It was a good match. Um, he's pretty new to the the whole uh, fight game. Let's see. He's only got eight wins so far, three losses, but he has a ton of potential. I think he could do some damage at uh, middleweight too, but mostly in the welterweight division, um, he's a serious contender. Moving on, number five on the list, Josh Koscheck, another guy from AKA. Uh, Excellent wrestler. We all know about his wrestling skills. Sometimes he likes to try and prove himself in the stand-up, though. That's where he gets in a little bit of trouble. Um, recently, he's been defeated by Tiago with a knockout. Also, Tiago Alves. So he struggles against guys with knockout power and really good stand-up. But he's got tremendous cardio, and I think I think he's motivated. I think now a fire has been lit, and he really wants that title shot. He wants another chance at GSP, and we'll just have to wait and see if he gets it. we got to move on to the number three list. Number three on the list is uh, Thiago Alves. We just talked about him a little bit. Um, he's another guy that was able to survive all five rounds against GSP. He has better takedown defense than Dan Hardy. Although that didn't help him out that much. Uh, he's got really good knockout power. Just a strong dude. He trains out of America Top Team in Coconut Creek, Florida. And uh, he's Brazilian. He's just got a, a good variety of skills going on. Looking forward to seeing him in there real soon. Moving on to number three. Paulo Tiago, another Brazilian. Uh, Tiago has displayed some impressive knockout power. Uh, let's he the only loss he has in the UFC is against John Fitch, okay, and I think that was by decision if I'm not mistaken. But Diago most recently has that submission victory over Mike Swick, which was very impressive. He's another guy who could get an instant title shot. All right, moving on number two, John Fitch. Of course, like I've said, um, I really like John Fitch. He's an excellent fighter, very well rounded. Superior wrestling skills right there with Koscheck and GSP. Although he did get dominated by GSP, he was able to survive five rounds. Uh, if anybody can ten, uh, contend with GSP in the wrestling department, it's probably Fitch. Uh, Fitch looked pretty impressive against Saunders with some nice clinch work and takedowns, ground and pound, things like that. Okay. Which brings me to my number one. I think everybody knows who I'm going to choose here. Obviously, he's the champion, GSP. I just want to say that George St. Pierre, I think he's getting too much criticism from people. Um, he really tries to finish his opponents, but these guys are top contenders. They're tough. Uh, say what you want about Dan Hardy, but his toughness kept him alive in that fight. Uh, GSP cranked on him. Looked like he was going to rip his arm off, but he... He couldn't do it. I mean, he just couldn't finish him because, not because he wasn't good enough at submission, but because Dan Hardy was so tough. But any other guy, most likely GSP would have submitted him. Um, GSP just has an excellent game plan and the, a great mindset, so it's going to take one hell of a competitor to beat him. Anyway, that's my list. That's my top 11 welterweights of the USC. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.